International AM and means Structural Engineering AMI. Today we are going to see another test in the fresh concrete series. Today we are going to see a test which is more sensitive than is compound test, the compaction factor test. Okay, so we are going to see how this, what are the patterns required, what are the procedures and what are the inference we get from the test. But before that, please uh, follow us through the official app of the AM Academy. Also you can follow us through the YouTube and the website. So, let's start. Hello everyone, good to see you, hope you're having a great day. So previously we have seen how workability is measured by using the slum code test. Okay, so today we are going to see another test which is more sensitive than the slum code test, the compaction factor test. In fact, a compaction factor test is preferred over the slum code test for the concrete which has a very low water semen ratio. Okay, now let's see how this test goes. Okay. But before that, we have some basic points. It's good to know some prior uh, theories before what we're going to do in a lab. It will help you to understand more the test, uh, more especially the significance of the test, why we are doing this. Okay, so let's see some of the basic facts. So first and foremost, let's have the uh, definition for the compaction factor. All right. So sometimes um, compaction factor is also known as the compacting factor. I've uh, gone through the books and have been uh, discussion with some of my professors. They said that both are correct. Both the terms have been alternatively used. So let's presume that both compacting factor and compaction factor are the same thing. Okay. In some books you can see as compacting factor. In some books you can see it as compaction factor. Okay. So whatever it is, they are talking about the same thing only. Okay. So let's see what compaction factor is. So compaction factor is the ratio of weight of partially compacted concrete to the weight of fully compacted concrete. So it is a ratio. So how it's a ratio between part, partially compacted concrete and weight of fully compacted concrete. All right. So you can understand about this definition once we do the experiment. All right. So in any lab ex experiment is based on some specific guidelines provided by a recognized institution. So once again, here, I guess, uh, Indian Standards is providing the guidelines through the code book, IS 9 1959 so it's a fancy number and both these are viva questions for you okay so compact what what is the significance of compaction factor test so this test is more sensitive than the slum cone test okay so this is mostly used as a laboratory test but sometimes it can be performed on the site if the uh, required uh, experimental apparatus are available on the site itself okay so this is used to determine the workability of less workable concrete and also the concrete with low water content or low water semen ratio. So in all these uh, scenarios, compaction factor plays a vital role. And also in the concrete where, uh, concrete that uses or the construction site that uses vibrators as the means of compaction, the compaction factor test is preferred over the slum cone test. Okay. But in lab we can use the tamping rod also, provided we must give enough uh, compaction to the concrete. Okay. Now, uh, this test is designed on the based on concept of internal compaction. Okay. So what is that? So in some, in most of the sites, if you are using a transit truck, okay, the, the concrete will be made flow from a certain height to a, to this uh, structure. Okay. Sometimes it may be pumped out. So during this pumping placing time, the concrete will undergo uh, self compaction or the internal compaction by itself. Okay. So in, such, in some scenarios, this internal compaction is more than enough for the concrete and only a less amount of external compaction like tamping or vibration is required. So this ratio is utilized here to understand how the workability of the concrete, to, to understand the workability of concrete. So based on this principle, this test is designed. Okay. Now let's move on and see what are the apparatus that are required for the compaction factor test. All right. So the first and foremost we need is the compaction factor apparatus. So this apparatus has two hoppers and one cylinder. So I will explain this in, in a moment. Let's see what are the other apparatus required. The tamping rod or the vibrators. The tamping rod of diameter 16 mm and length of 60 centimeters. If you have vibrators in your lab, very good. Otherwise you can use the tamping rod. Now materials for the fresh concrete for the preparation and also the electronic weighing balance. So these are some of the apparatus that are required for the compaction factor test or the compacting factor test. Now let's see the apparatus. So this is the compaction factor apparatus. So this has two hoppers, that is hopper one, hopper two, let that be H1 and H2. This is the cylinder, that is a C. So hoppers are placed in such a, in uh, this way and it's, it, uh, all, all three are mounted on a frame. And this, is a, this has a base plate also. 
and now hoppers have a underside trap doors so this is the trap door it is the, we have a lock also right here so i have given you three distinctive colors the different dimensions of the hoppers and the cylinder so you won't be confused so for hopper one the upper diameter the d will be 254 mm that is this diameter will be 254 mm lower diameter will be 127 mm and the length will be 279 mm for the second one we have di uh, diameter upper diameter of 229 mm lower diameter of 127 mm and length of 229 mm so the, dis the distance between the top side of the hopper 2 and the bottom side of the hopper 1 will be 203 mm and the cylindrical dimensions will be diameter of 152 mm height of 305 mm and the distance between cylinder and the hopper 2 that is this distance will be 203 mm so i hope you understand the apparatus now let's quickly move on to the procedures so first and foremost what you need to do is clean the apparatus thoroughly clean it dry it so that there's no moisture content in it and grease it so that the concrete can slip through fast next measure the ingredients as per the design okay except the water because if you add water the concrete will, concrete will set soon and also that window of placing will be so less so it's better first uh, proportion the ingredient all the dry ingredients first mix it thoroughly so that we get a uniform mix all right uh, don't add water right now we'll add water later now measure the empty weight of the cylinder let that be w1 okay now uh, uh, empty weight of, uh, weight of the cylinder is taken now we have already mixed the all the dry ingredients now add the water to those ingredients as per the design and mix it thoroughly and obtain a uniform mix so mix thoroughly obtain a uniform mix after that to uh, keep the mix over there first and foremost close the trap doors of both the hoppers okay so the trap doors are closed and the lock it is locked now that uh, or now the hoppers are safe and secure now place the concrete in the topmost hopper that is a hopper one fill it completely till the top okay clean the sides if there is any, anything protruding out or any extra cement falling out of the um, hopper clean it nicely and fill the hopper till the top okay so that's it now now the hopper is filled the top hopper is completely filled with the concrete now release the lock and open the trap door of the hopper one immediately so that the concrete will fall from the hopper one and it will fill in the hopper two in, with the help of gravity it just fall slips down and fall to the uh, hopper two now again similarly in the hop in the second hopper uh, open the trap door of the second hopper now don't do anything else just open the open the lock and open the trap door of the second hopper and allow the concrete to free fall again to the bottommost cylinder right now now the, the concrete is fell on the cylinder uh, level top level of the cylinder is leveled now this setup is weight okay that is the uh, weight of the cylinder plus the weight of partially compacted concrete let that be w2 so we have the weight of weight w2 as the weight of the cylinder plus the weight of partially compacted concrete now empty the cylinder empty the cylinder and fill the cylinder with the same sample under the consideration okay or, or under experimentation now fill now this time you fill the cylinder by using uh, three layers okay fill the cylinder by three layers three equal layers of concrete and also provide compaction for each layer at a minimum of 25 tampings okay so a layer one is placed in the layer of concrete is placed in the cylinder 25 tampings is provided that is more than enough uh, compaction is provided layer two is placed again compaction is provided so that the tamping rod should go through the entire mix and to reach the top uh, such as the tamping rod should penetrate through the both the layers and reach the bottommost part of the cylinder all right so enough compaction is provided now level the top surface once the con uh, concrete is filled with filled in the cylinder level the top surface and weigh this setup that is weight of cylinder plus weight of fully compacted concrete let that be w3 now the experiment is over we have w1 as the weight of the cylinder w2 as the weight of the cylinder plus weight of partially compacted concrete w3 as weight of the cylinder plus weight of fully compacted concrete all right so i hope you understand what are the variables stand for stood for now let's move on to the compaction factor calculation so as i said before compaction factor is a ratio so we have the ratio here so it's a ratio of weight of partially compacted concrete divided by the weight of fully compacted concrete or the ratio of partially weight of partially compacted concrete to the weight of fully compacted concrete all right 
So we had WP as a weight of partially compacted concrete, WF as weight of fully compacted concrete. So how we obtain WP? That is W2 minus W1. So WF is obtained by W3 minus W1. So once we um, apply all these values to the formula, we get a compaction factor. So generally the compaction factor lies between 0 0.7 to 0 0.9. Okay. So I hope you understand. So this is the inference that we get from. So this is, this is the result and this is the inference. All right. So that's all for today. I hope you understand how the compaction factor test is done. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please uh, comment your suggestions. Please uh, rate my presentation. Please recommend and share the slides. And also this is the link to my profile in the Anna Academy platform. Just copy in your browser. You can see the works that I've done based on the ingredients of concrete and other very good stuff. Also the lab tests for the coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, cement are also explained over in my profile. Okay. So please do check that if you have any doubts over there. So that's all for today. I wish you a great day. Thank you so much. Ciao.